Today I'm gonna build a handwritten font and you're coming with me. We're gonna take these sheets from this to this to this. And all of that, we're gonna be done before you finish that second cup of coffee. Let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery. I'm the seven figure designer and today I'm going to show you a way that you can actually start building a little bit of income for yourself or at the very least not have to write your name so much because now you can just clickety clickety clack type it right into your keyboard and boom hand lettered typefaces on the go. I recently created my own first typeface and I call it bleed and it was it was it was a fun process but along the way I learned some things and I kind of figured out uh, you know how to do things a little bit better so I'm gonna share some of that with you so you don't have quite so many obstacles before we begin I want to make sure you understand this video is gonna be a little bit fast-paced we're gonna be moving fast and loose and getting to that finish line really quickly. But I don't want you to be intimidated by that. In fact, what I want you to do is watch this video all the way to the end, absorb it, get it in there one time, then go back and watch it again. And when you get to parts where you get a little bit, like you need me to slow down, just hit the pause button. That way you can follow along and do the things that I do and not have to worry about like, I don't know what Dave is doing. But also at the end of this, I'm gonna be talking to you about how I can help you make this even better. And you know, how you can actually replicate this process over and over and over for your benefit. But let's get to it. Into the screen. First thing you are gonna want to do is go over to calligrapher.com and there is no E, it's calligrapher, calligrapher. The most important things you need to understand are the features, which you can click and it will show you everything that's possible with this particular website. The pricing, which is really good. Back in the day when you wanted to create a font, especially a pro level one, you had to have some really expensive software. Not anymore. And in fact, with calligrapher, you can even create fonts for free with some limitations. And the biggest limitation is that max number of characters right there, that's 75. We'll talk about that in a minute. But even if you did sign up for the pro level, it's only $8 for one month. How many fonts do you think you could make in one month for only eight bucks? I guarantee you it's a lot. Or if you're feeling really saucy, go get yourself the six month program for only $24. The hundreds, hot thousands, maybe not thousands, lots and lots of fonts. So I'm gonna go ahead and click start app. It's gonna bring me to this page right here. You have basically two tabs. You have templates, then you have my fonts. Step one and step two. And they break down the steps for you really easy. First, create a template like this one. We fill it out like so, and then we scan that sucker in so that we can upload it back up and then build our own typeface. Down here, it'll break down the, your current plan and what your limitations or possibilities are right here. But we're not gonna worry about that because we already know where we're at with that. And we're gonna go ahead and click templates. Starting over here on the left, you see we have different categories. We have basics, common scripts, miscellaneous, which is math and punctuation and currencies and whatnot. And then we have different languages. I'm just gonna start with minimal English at this point and you can figure out what you want to add later. If I click minimal English, that's 60 characters. It just drops in those characters in there. And this is basically, it's just, you can see. Basic punctuation and then letters of both upper and lower case. I'm definitely gonna wanna add numbers. And then if I add the punct minimal punctuation, which adds even more than what I've got going on here. But here's the important part, the thing I talked about before when it comes to choosing between a free account and a pro account. These are the basic characters for English language. All the way down here in the bottom right, you'll see the amount of glyphs that are on the page, which is 79. On the free account, your limitation was 75. So you're gonna have to either get rid of four of these or upgrade to the pro account. In my opinion, that alone is enough to spend that eight bucks just so you can get a full fledged typeface. You go and add Adobe Latin, that really expands it quite a bit and they have different versions of that, Latin 2 and Latin 3. And all this really does is just add all these different intricate characters to the set. And that brings you up to a whopping 326 characters, which you could do, absolutely. But guess what? That means that's 326 characters that you're gonna have to hand write. You feel up to the challenge, get down with your bad self. We're not doing that today. Oh, one thing I almost forgot about this is that even though I have these 79 characters here, you'll notice that there are still some that are missing and I couldn't figure out why this was the case. I'm not gonna question it, but there's some punctuation that is missing and I wanna show you how to find them. So we go up here to arbitrary characters and then we're going to switch this from Armenian down to basic Latin. And you can see that I have several characters that are kind of highlighted because they haven't been dropped in. So I'm just gonna go through and click these one at a time and add them in. Now go down here at the bottom, you'll see I have 94 characters. That is basically the entire glyph set from the keyboard. Whatever you see on the keyboard, especially like if you hit shift, you're gonna cover all of these that are on the screen. Once I'm satisfied with my selection, I'm gonna go up here to template and I'm just going to, I don't know, call this something. New scribble type and I can do either a PDF or a PNG and I can also change the size of these template cells. And I caution you on this because what it's gonna do is it's gonna increase the size of these cells, which you might think is good, but what's ultimately gonna happen is it's gonna add more and more and more and more pages, which means that's more and more pages that you're gonna have to scan back in. Plus something else you might consider is how small or large do you write? because 
you don't want to be forcing yourself to write bigger or smaller than what you would normally do. And you should also take in consideration what type of pen you're gonna use when you write because certain pen tips are obviously gonna, you know, want you to write bigger or smaller more naturally. You can always turn around and re-download this template if you are not happy with the sizes. I definitely wanna draw on the helplines because that's gonna help me create my, you know, my baseline grid and my A-sander lines and my X height and all that stuff. And then I'm gonna add also the characters as backgrounds. My printer kinda sucks, so it's gonna be tough to see this pretty faint, but if you look closely in some of these boxes, you'll see that there are like faint gray letters. Those are there just to give you kind of a guideline for size relationship as you start to write these things. And if you see the size of those, if you don't write that large naturally, then you're probably gonna wanna reduce that size of those template cells down considerably. When I hit download and save to my computer, which you can tell I've obviously already done because I've got it sitting right here in my hand. And once you have your template in your hand, go ahead and fill it out, like this. Once you have these back in the computer, make sure you scan them back in at high resolution, and then we're gonna bring them into any particular app you choose to brighten them up. I'll tell you why. The first time I brought these in, I actually just shot a photo with my phone, and then I went to Calligrapher and just uploaded those directly into the system, thinking that it would go ahead and auto-correct some of this stuff. But as you can see, some of the grays from the lines and even the outlines of the characters are a little bit darker than other grays. And it's these darker grays that caused an issue, creating way more artifacts than I was comfortable with. So to solve this problem, I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a threshold filter on top of this, close that, and um, this is almost ready to go. But I just wanna make sure that the one thing that isn't messed up is this right here. I think that there's some variance that's allowed here, but I'm just going to go ahead and do some touch up to that to make sure it's not too destructive. And now that I've got these set, I'm going to export these out and then put those together so that when I upload them back into Calligrapher, they can all be read. PNG, JPEG, PDF, those are all accepted by the system. Just make sure that each file that you collect is less than eight megabytes because it doesn't accept anything larger than that for whatever reason. Now back over here to Calligrapher, I'm going to go ahead and click my fonts. And as you can see, I already got a few that's established, but I'm just going to go ahead and click new font. Yours is going to be empty. So all you really need to do is go to upload template and we can adjust things later. But if you want to, you can hit new font too and, and go that direction. So I'm going to hit new font. I'm going to name it. I'm just basically going to keep everything as is, but I am going to come over here to the metadata and I'm just going to fill this out real quickly. You can feel that, fill this out however you see fit, but this is what I'm doing. Just the copyright notice, the manufacturer name and my designer name, which is me. They're all me. So, oh, I forgot my date here. 2022. So now I've got a new font ready to have a template uploaded. I'm going to choose my files. You can also put six different files into this uploader at one time. If you have more than six files that you need to upload, just upload your first six and then add the rest after the fact. And then definitely click automatically clean templates and then hit upload. So now here it is scanned everything in and you can kind of review some things if you want. If there's some characters in here that you don't like the way they look and you want to try again, you can hit these and then go ahead and hit add characters to your font. And bam! There you go. You have all your characters, all your glyphs, everything's ready to go. We're almost there. So I'm gonna go ahead and build my font right now. I'm just gonna leave this as is. Randomized characters is only important if you were gonna do variables. We're not doing variables. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit bit build. And ta-da, we have ourselves a typeface. You can bring up your preview size if you wish. You can also click on the alphabet to see each individual characters as they sit next to each other. If you wanted to look at it in French, German, Italian, or Spanish, you can, or you can look at a uh, size comparison. And this one I think is important because you're gonna want your typeface to be relational to other typefaces. Because if somebody decides to, some reason, use part of your typeface next to another typeface in the same line, you don't want them to have to fix the typeface size every time they use your font versus the other font. As you can see, mine are kind of all over the place in size related. I mean, some of them are good, and some of them not so good. I could go ahead and boost this up just a bit. So I'm not gonna do anything about this yet. I'm gonna hit close. I'm gonna go back up here to edit font details. And I'm just gonna change my font size to like 110%. I can also change my word spacing if I wanted to, and word spacing is tracking, or I can change my letter spacing or kerning. I'm gonna bring my letter spacing down a little bit, and I'm gonna bring my word spacing up because I want the spaces between the words as well to be larger, and, uh, and then I can just tighten everything up with the kerning aspect. I'm just gonna leave it like that, and I'm gonna hit save, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna build again. You notice it got a little bit tighter in here, and I probably go even a little bit tighter than that myself. Also, the spacing of the words themselves versus other words came out really good. I'm actually pretty stoked about this, and this is good to go. So now all I need to do is go up here to where it says squiggles regulars, right click, save link as, and then save this to my desktop. And then you load that into your system, and now you have a brand new font to use. It's really that simple. Now for the sake of time on this video, I 
chose to kind of glaze over some of these things because I, want, I didn't want this video to end up being three and a half hours long. I wanted to give you good quality content that, you know, give you enough of a self-starter so that you can go do your own thing. If you're a seasoned designer, then some of this stuff is gonna be really easy for you. But if you're new to design or you've never used type in this way and you wanna learn a little bit more because you know that you wanna do this a lot more often, well, then I have an opportunity for you that if you want to get involved in something that I've created, we can work on this stuff more extensively together. And that thing is called Fast Fonts. What is Fast Fonts, you ask? It's my very first course. I've created my first design course, and uh, let me just tell you folks right away, I intended this course to be much more simple, but because I am who I am, I put everything I possibly could into this course because number one, I want you to learn something. Plus I want you to come out of this with not just a few fonts in your pocket, not just from you, but also ones that I provide you. But I also want to give you a sense of accomplishment that you can turn around and do this over and over and over again, not just to create more fonts, but to create more opportunity for you and whatever it is that you're doing with your business. If you don't have a business yet and you want a business creating digital products like this, well then Fast Fonts is gonna be a real opportunity opportunity for you. Now, Fast Fonts doesn't open up till January 17th, but if you want to go down to that link down below in the description and get signed up now, not only am I going to give you the early bird pricing, but I'm also going to throw in a little bit of a bonus for anybody who gets in before the class opens up to everybody. Early bird pricing is actually going to extend all the way to the end of the month, but only people that sign up in this first week before it actually opens are going to get the freebie. If you're not up for freebies and you just want to get into the course, well, you have until the 31st to get in at the early bird pricing. After the 31st, that price is going to go jump up. So I would go down there and get signed up as soon as possible. And something else about the early birds, anybody who joins before the 31st, I'm gonna be putting on new courses, you know, over the next few months. And anybody who gets in early now, let's just say I'm gonna take care of you when those new courses come, if it's something you're into. And while you're sitting there thinking about it, check out that video where I talk about other digital assets that I've created. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna get out. Remember, be good today, even better tomorrow. See ya.